Here's an example of factoring a quadratic expression using a generic rectangle. Our goal is to end up with two binomial factors that's going to end up looking like that, okay? In chapter 6, we did the opposite. In chapter 6, we started out with the binomial factors, and we multiplied using a generic rectangle. Um, and when we multiplied, we ended, up, we ended up filling in the rectangle. So that's what we need to do first. We need to fill in our rectangle. Um, and so if you remember, the top, the top left box always ended up being my first term in my answer. The bottom right box always ended up being the last term in my answer. Okay? And then the two middle boxes, or the diagonal boxes, we always ended up adding them to get my middle term. So I know that the sum of these two boxes, whatever it is, the sum of them is equal to the middle term in what I'm starting with. So here's where the diamond problem comes into play. The sum of my middle boxes is the same as my middle term. So the sum in my diamond problem, in this case, is going to be negative 11x. Now the product. Um, I also showed you in a couple problems that it always ended up happening that the diagonals, the product of my diagonals, were always the same. So whatever the product of um, these two diagonals are is the same thing as the product of the ones that are missing right now. So I know that the product of the one that's missing is going to be the same thing as the product of the one that's there. So if I multiply the two diagonals that I know, that's going to be the same as the product of the two that I don't know. So it's kind of like now I have a little, um, now I have a little puzzle. I have to try to find two numbers so that when I multiply, I get negative 60, and when I add, I get negative 11. Okay? I know that one of them is negative and one is positive, since the product is negative. And I know the bigger one is negative, since my, my sum is negative. Okay? So two numbers, I multiply, I get negative 60, add, you get negative 11, happen to be negative 15x and 4x. Okay? So bingo. Now I know what goes in the two missing boxes. It doesn't matter where I put them. Okay, so it doesn't matter if I had switched around the 4x and the negative 15x. Okay, great. Now I've got the inside of my box filled out. I need to find out what the outside is. So I'm going to look at only the top row. I'm looking at only the top row, and I want to know what the greatest common factor of 6x squared and 15x is. All right, let me get rid of this line a little bit. Okay, so... Greatest common factor of 6x and negative 15x. First I look at the numbers, 6 and negative 15. The greatest common factor as far as numbers go is 3, because 3 goes into both 6 and 15. And then I look at my variables. They both have an x, so I can factor out an x as well. Okay. Now, so there's one of my parts of my binomial. Now I'm looking at the top. 3x times what number is 6x squared? Well, it's going to have to be 2x, since x times x is x squared. And then 3x times what number is negative 15x? Here, it's just negative 5. I don't need x because I already have an x out front. I'm only missing one more, and 2x times what number is 4x? And that's going to be 2. Now, to double check myself, when I multiply 2 times negative 5, I should get negative 10, and I do. So I'm good. So pretty much I'm done. I just need to make sure I write my answer in the proper form. So my final factors would be 2x minus 5 times 3x plus 